I'm glad to have you following us along today as we take up the subject of improving yourself, doing a series of videos on ways in which you can maybe do a self-diagnosis and even make some changes in your life, which may make you more optimal in your living. So we want to um, help you in this lesson today to describe maybe some feelings and some thoughts and how to bring those thoughts into captivity. Let me begin with saying, even though I'm licensed in Tennessee as a licensed professional counselor and I have a mental health service provider designation, you can look up my license online, I'm not providing in this series therapy. And if you're going to therapy, don't stop. If you need therapy, then go. Don't use this as a crutch to help you. This is just a training tool to help you. Maybe you know somebody who helps it. I hope that you'll use it maybe as a stepping stone to say, okay, maybe I need to go get some help. Nothing wrong with it. In fact, if you have a toothache, you go to the dentist. If you have a broken arm, you go to the, to the doctor to get it set. I hope you do. If you have cancer, you go to an oncologist. I had liver disease and a kidney disease. I certainly wasn't going to go to uh, some mechanic and say, hey, can you replace my liver like you do uh, an engine? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go to somebody who's an expert who can help me. But something, there's this thought in our minds, this cultural thing that if we go get help mentally, then we must be crazy. But you're not crazy just because you need a tune-up. So maybe this will be a way in which you can see that you can get help through just some common sense. And then there are so many tools that can help you that I can't possibly go into in a setting like this. So please understand at the outset, this is not therapy. And don't pretend it is. This is a help, a Band-Aid maybe, even to get you to the place where you will get some help. Now, with that said, the Bible has some things to say about your thought life and your mind. And I want to give you a couple of those as we begin. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says this, Cast for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now that's a tall order, you have to admit. Maybe one of the most difficult commands in all the Bible to obey. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, just because we may fail at that doesn't mean we shouldn't reach for that goal. Our thought life should be pure. So the Bible says something else about our thought life in Philippians chapter 4. Verse 7. Sorry, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. What's, what things? True, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, and praise. That's the things you are to bring into captivity and think on those things. And as I said, it's very difficult. Now, to introduce this lesson, I've drawn a clown. At least I hope you recognize it as being a clown. You might say, that's possibly the worst clown I've ever seen. And I wouldn't necessarily disagree with you. Certainly the worst flower you've ever seen coming out of his hat. And, and I know if Chris Hammond or Buster are watching this, they're certainly looking at that and they go, that ain't nothing, no clown like I've ever seen before. But anyway, it's my attempt at a clown. That's my interpretation of a clown. And if you'd like for me to maybe draw you a picture that you could frame at your house, then contact me. You might.
talk me into that. Now, we're going to talk about fact and fiction. I'm going to say some things about this picture that are facts. Facts are evidence-based. Facts are things that you can prove. And there's no doubt about it. There's no question about it. So what are the facts? First of all, that's a clown. Second of all, it's smiling. That's obvious, isn't it? Fact, it's smiling. Fact, it's found in a circus. You ever been to the circus? You see clowns. They just go hand in hand like peanut butter and jelly. You got a circus, you got a clown. You don't have much of a circus if you don't have clowns. And then maybe you'll see one at a birthday party. Certainly, if your child is afraid of clowns, that would be the worst thing you could ever do. But some people have birthday parties and have clowns there. And then, of course, it's colorful. This one isn't so colorful because of my limited ability, but usually the face is painted white and the uh, hair is colorful and the flower is colorful and the outfit is colorful. So colorful is, again, evidence-based. That's all things you could say about a clown that if you walked into a court of law and had to prove what that is, you could prove that's a smiling clown that is colorful that you find at a circus. You say, so you're teaching me about some mental health on this. Bear with me. So here's some fiction, some fiction about this clown. You might say that clown is funny. Some clowns are funny. Some clowns ain't so funny. So how do you prove a clown's funny just by looking at a clown? You might come up with evidence about a particular clown that you could say, well, that clown is funny, but you can't say all clowns are funny. You might say that clown's weird. You might say it's scary. You might say it's happy. You might say it's ugly. You might say that's the best looking clown I've ever seen. And I appreciate that. Send me an email if that's what you think. So here's the fact and the fiction. Facts, evidence-based. Fiction is really just a person's opinion or a group of people's opinion, but it's just that, it's an opinion. So we wanna be able to distinguish between what is fact and what is fiction. Now, this is gonna make a little noise, so bear with me. Oh, I broke it. So here we go with the second part. The second part is we wanna look at fact and fiction and look at the point of what we have here on this lesson and on these thoughts is we have a trigger. Just look at the boxes for now and don't pay any attention if you can to these other words. We'll get to those in just a moment. But we look at the trigger and then that leads to thoughts and the thoughts lead to feelings or the thoughts can lead to behavior. And then again, those behaviors lead to thoughts or those feelings lead to thoughts. And the point is of this chart is it just ends up being in a circle like a being trapped like a gerbil or being on a Ferris wheel. Your thoughts just race and race and race and you never go anywhere. Uh, you've probably had some time in your life and maybe it's currently going on where you have racing thoughts, particularly when you lay down at night and you just race and race and race and race and you never come to a conclusion, you never come to any way in which to solve the problem and it absolutely drives you to the point where you can't sleep and you've got insomnia and then that creates other problems. As we talked last week, remember the triangle, the spirit, the soul, and the body? If you don't get enough sleep, it's gonna affect your body, if you affect your soul, if it, your mind, it's gonna affect your spirit. So all things have to be working in congruence, that's a big word, in balance, in, in, uh, in the best possible way in order for you to be the whole person that God wants you to be. That's why he says, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now we're focusing on the thought life. We're, th we're thinking about that mental part. We're focusing on that soul. And if you have some trigger that triggers thoughts, feelings, thoughts, behavior, thoughts, behavior, thoughts, feelings, and you're caught in that trap, then we've got to determine what is fact and what is fiction, what is evidence-based, what is real, what is true that can be proven, and what isn't true. 
and what is fiction and what isn't really something that's taking place. So in that process, let's begin with the trigger. Usually what triggers, and by the way, before I say that, all of these things over here, all these feelings are negative. And all these behaviors are negative. That's because if you're having positive thoughts and good thoughts and good behavior, you're probably not going to need this. You certainly aren't most likely, I can't make a judgment about you, but most likely you're not going to be talking to anybody about needing therapy. I mean, life's going pretty good. Not at perfect, not nobody's life is perfect, but on the on the general sense of terms, you're fully functioning, you have a job, you, you have a good appetite, you're sleeping well, uh, your thought life's pretty much under control. You're not going to be looking. If, you, if you're calm and you're happy and you're joyful and you're exhilarated and you're looking forward to tomorrow, then see, that's, that's not up here because we really don't need to talk about that. What we need to talk about is the negative. So what happens is the trigger of maybe it's the past, something that happened in your past. Uh, and it could be something horrible. Let's suppose that you've had someone in your family murdered or you had a child die in a tragic accident or you've been yourself in a car accident or, God forbid, you've been raped and I've dealt with people who've been raped. It's, it is a horrible thing. And if you have that in your past, then there's triggers that can come up, things that will, and we call it a trigger because that's what starts the, the inertia, the, the motion of moving you toward bad thoughts. And when that trigger hits, then things can quickly get out of control. So really the trigger is something you need to identify. And I can't go into all the details of what might trigger you. It might be being alone. It might be being, might being insecure because, uh, you know, you had a, a job and the boss fired you for no good reason. And so any job you go into, uh, you're a little insecure as to whether or not. Maybe you're in your second marriage and the first marriage failed and uh, things begin to get a little weird and you get insecure. Maybe you're insecure the whole relationship because you just can't get rid of that past failure and those past thoughts. You might be a student who goes to school and you've been bullied at school and you think, man, I hate school and the, the school bus or the school room or seeing a particular teacher who you didn't particularly get along with, you may just go, my anxiety goes up. Things are, things are not good. I don't want to go to school or I don't want to participate in sports. I don't what? Because I've got a bad past. Something bad in the past has happened. It may not be as horrible as a rape, but it's, it's real to you. It's, I'm not talking that you have to be at the top of the chart of the worst thing that's ever happened to anybody. What's happened to you is valid. What's happened to you is real to you. So we are going to, to agree with you. This was a bad thing that happened to you. It might be a horrible thing that happened to you. In your mind, in your situation, you may count it as horrible. That's okay. We'll take that definition as you said it. But those horrible things that have happened to you bring you thoughts. Now, most of the time, those thoughts, if it's something bad, are going to lead to bad feelings. And I've not listed them all here. Just a example. And people have a hard time with feelings. They have a hard time expressing feelings, even expressing emotion. And it's hard to distinguish sometimes to make an operational definition of what we mean when we say, well, I'm down. Well, what's the difference between being down and depressed? That's hard for us sometimes to, for anybody to try to say, well, is there really a difference? Is there a difference between being tense and being uneasy or being nervous? Is there a difference between being angry and being irritated? Well, I think there is, but trying to define it, I think each one of these are legitimate feelings. As I said, they're not all. 
But these are legitimate feelings that people feel. Anxious, disgusted, depressed, empty, lost, fed up, miserable, awful, withdrawn, unloved, hurt, fearful, down, tense, discouraged, annoyed, gloomy, sorry, guilty, ashamed. I mean, those are all feelings and there's, there's much many more that you can look at and those feelings. So, but most of the time, what do we do when somebody says, how are you feeling? What do we say? What do you say? I say to you, how are you feeling today? Good? Well, now, of course, we're not going to take off the mask because the last thing anybody wants to hear, they're, they're really just asking that question to be polite. They, most people are not asking you that question to see how you really feel. <laughs> you know, they don't want to get in there. They don't want to cross that path. So they just expect you to say good. Now, if somebody said to you, I'm not suggesting you do, but if somebody comes up to you and says, how are you feeling? You say, well, I'm really feeling unloved and hurt and fearful. That's how I'm feeling. If you really want to know how I'm feeling. That person's probably just going to say, well, that's too bad and go their way because they don't know how to handle that. And we don't know how to handle these feelings particularly well ourselves. So we don't want people telling us that. So we have this tendency just to hide our feelings and put on a mask and smile like the clown, even though that clown may be the most miserable person on the earth, the smile is painted on their face. And how many times have you had a smile painted on your face when you're feeling some of these, many of these, most of these? And what happens when you get these feelings? Well, it leads to more thoughts. And the thoughts lead to behaviors. And again, the behaviors are not positive. What are the behaviors? Well, reckless behavior. I'm going to escape. I'm going to quit. I'm going to give up. I'm going to lay down. I'm not going to try anymore. Behaviors. I'm going to isolate myself. I'm going to avoid people. You get desperate and you start drinking. And when I say drinking, you're st drinking liquor. Or you turn to drugs or pills. You say, well, that's just going to numb me and I'm going to maybe feel better if I do this. I'll feel better if I'm not around people and I just isolate myself. It could go as far as committing suicide. You can't do a study. It's impossible. But I think it's logical to say that people who have committed suicide have had these feelings. That doesn't mean everybody who has these feelings is going to commit suicide. But wouldn't you guess with me that if a person commits suicide, they have feelings like that and maybe more that are not listed? So that's the behavior because of thoughts. I can't get out of this. I'm trapped. There's no escape. There's no way out. Behavior leading to arguments, to divorce, to a breakup in a relationship. You might be demanding. You might be argumentative. You might be a jerk. And your family doesn't want to have anything to do. Oh, daddy's coming home. Everybody be quiet. Or mama's coming home. We don't need to say anything. Don't bring that up. Because it just changes everybody's behavior. Children go to their room and close the door. And you wonder why are in their room all the time? Well, they may be experiencing these feelings. And somebody needs to dig in and begin to find out what are you feeling without somebody saying, fine, I'm good. Everything's A-OK, -okay, perfect. Are you anxious? Are you having panic attacks? Then you need to get some therapy. You need to get some help. There are ways to help you. I've helped people before who've had panic attacks. I've helped people before who've had depression by the grace of God. I've even worked through things myself and I'm still working through things myself because we understand this. What's triggering this? What are my thoughts? What am I, th what am I thinking? Because these thinkings are lead to feelings. We can identify these feelings but the question's immediately going to be, what are you thinking? Because the thinking is going to lead to the answer of why you're feeling this. 
And then we're going to back up and go, okay, you're feeling this. What are you thinking? You identify the thoughts and you say, why are you thinking those thoughts? And you're back to the trigger. And when you identify that trigger and you can quit making the, excuse the analogy, but using the trigger, quit making the gun go off that makes you have these thoughts. If you can stop it here, you've made great progress here and 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 here. Now, if you're exhibiting these behaviors, it's connected to these feelings. And if you're having these feelings, it's going to exhibit itself in these behaviors. Eventually, it's going to break down. You can only keep the mask on for so long. Then the mask has to come off. And the real you shows up. How long has it been? It's a tough question, I understand. But I'm talking to you, okay? Just me and you. How long has it been since you let somebody see the real you? And if it's been a long time, it's have some courage and just take the mask off. You say, oh man, if I did that, I don't know what the consequences would be. Well, I'll tell you one consequence, you'll get healthier. You'll get better. And most likely, you know that fact or fiction, it'll never get better. Well, that's a feeling. That's fiction. It can get better. By the grace of God. Now, therapists, many therapists, I won't say all therapists because you don't want to judge all teachers by one teacher. You had one teacher who treated you ugly. You don't want to say all teachers are bad apples. You don't want to say, well, one doctor didn't be no good. You can't say that's true of all doctors. One therapist failed me. All therapists are bad. One preacher betrayed my trust. You can't say that's true of all pastors. So you see my point? So you can't just say, well, it's... We have to bring in the grace of God. And so back to my point, therapists, many of them won't bring God into it. So find you a therapist who will. There are a dime a dozen. Find a therapist who will help you and bring you some closure and peace. One thing you can do in the meantime is found in Romans chapter 12. I beseech thee therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And then it says in verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So there's the body and the mind. The body and the mind. So present your body a living sacrifice. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's the Spirit. It's in those verses. See what I taught you last time. Spirit, soul, body. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Body, soul, spirit. And that's what God wants you to be. He wants you to be whole. Not only in your body. Go to the doctor. Get regular checkups. Take care of yourself. Sleep, eat, exercise. That's repeating last lesson. Just to remind you. But also take care of that mind. Bring your thoughts into captivity. Think on what is true and what is virtuous. Think on those things. Determine, start determining between what is fact and what is fiction. Is that really true? Or is that something I've just got in my mind that I can't really prove? I hope the lesson helps you and we'll continue this. Thank you for your responses. If you have any, need any help in any way, please contact me.